So I'm with Brian Domain, who is the author of Bezonomics and knows quite a bit about Jeff Bezos, both from a company perspective and a personality perspective. Brian, why do you think the, the Blue Origin flight, the space flight last week, or, or was maybe, in fact, it was this week, what am I even saying, was so polarizing? Uh, pleasure to be here today, John. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, Jeff Bezos, as the richest man in the world, really can't win, no matter what he does. He's, he's a target of envy, um, and he, because he's so wealthy, and, and he's now living a very, uh, extroverted life. I mean, he had a, a, a very uh, salacious affair with his new girlfriend, Lauren Sanchez, and divorced his wife, and uh, then there was the pandemic, and he got a lot of heat for the working conditions in his warehouses. But now he's, you know, gone off to outer space. Uh, he, it was a successful mission, uh, even though it only lasted, I think it was 11 minutes, 11 minutes yeah. uh, up in space. Um, and he came down, but you know, people, some people think that uh, that money could have been better spent on helping the poor. Mm -hmm. And I think he got or climate change or something well, like that. Yeah, but you know, he's he's already pledged uh, ten billion dollars to help uh, fund uh, programs that will uh, you know uh, fight climate change, and he also has investment vehicles that are uh, putting money into uh, different. Uh, businesses that are trying to fight climate change. Just this week there was an article about this Boston company and they've developed a new type of battery uh, for solar farms and wind farms so they can store energy and get it at night when the, wind's, when the sun's not shining um, or times when the wind's not blowing. And it's supposed to be super cheap and super effective and Bezos is one of the major investors yep. in that business. So I was saying Yes, you can make that argument, but it, it, it's kind of a false argument because I think he's got so much money. I mean, his wealth last year alone increased by $75 billion. He's got so much money, he can do both. Right. And you said to me that you think that Amazon was always a vehicle, I guess pun intended, in order for him to be able to go to space. That that was always why he wanted to make the money was to go to space. Right. Well, you know... That's what I concluded in my book, Bezonomics, uh, which is about Bezos and his rise to power, uh, because he's always been obsessed with outer space. When he was a kid, he was a Trekkie. Uh, when he gave his uh, valedictorian speech at his high school, he talked about exploring outer space. Um, Alexa, you know, the, the, uh, which everyone knows, you know, you just talk to Alexa and yeah. your music plays, your TV plays, or whatever. Um, that was started within Amazon because uh, Jeff and some of his lieutenants wanted a talking computer like they had on the USS Enterprise. Okay. Right? So, and the thing that you have to realize about Bezos, I mean, Bezos has, has said that the most important thing he's doing in his life right now is exploring outer space. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, and some of the resentment, I think, comes from the fact that uh, there's a misunderstanding about what he's doing here. It seems like just a, a junket. You know, here's a rich guy, he's spending billions of dollars on this 11-minute you know, ride, and that's it. But Bezos is a long-term thinker. He doesn't think in terms of uh, years or even decades. He thinks in terms of centuries. Yeah, and in one of the interviews he talked about moving heavy industry off of this planet and putting it on other planets. That's so absolutely right, John. And his idea there is that as the population of the Earth grows and our resources become more scarce, we're not going to be able to thrive if we just stay on this planet. So we're going to need to explore and develop outer space, and that might mean mining asteroids. Mm -hmm. It might mean uh, doing heavy manufacturing. He sees Earth as a place that should be zoned as residential and light industrial, uh, okay. and then outer space gets all the heavy industry and the pollution. Now, the problem is it costs a lot of money to go to outer space. And it costs a lot of money to move heavy equipment to and outer space. It, exactly. So his vision is to make space exploration so inexpensive that future generations of entrepreneurs will be able to um, you know, work in outer space. It's, it's a similar idea to when the government invented the internet. 
And that allowed a whole generation of entrepreneurs, including Bezos, to build businesses on top of the internet. If just Be Bezos had to build the internet and Amazon, Amazon probably wouldn't exist uh, to this day. So space exploration, in his mind, is a matter of making it cheap. Now, why is it so expensive? Uh, up until now, most rockets would go up out into outer space. And they're not reusable. They're not reusable. It'd be like flying uh, a 737 from New York to San Francisco, getting the people off board, and then blowing it up. Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make economic sense. You know, the one thing that struck me was the cowboy hat that <laughs> he wore, and I think he got a lot of heat for that, and it did strike me as a bit ridiculous that he tried to portray himself as a space cowboy, but before we were on camera, you actually had a good rationale for that. Right. I mean, I think he deserves to wear that cowboy okay. hat. He grew up uh, as a kid uh, on his, in, during the summers on his grandfather's uh, ranch in West Texas, um, where he learned how to be really resourceful. They, they built uh, you know, sheds, they fixed caterpillar tractors, and it's part of where Bezos gets his, his uh, sort of resourcefulness. And Bezos today owns 400,000 acres of ranch land in West Texas where the launch took place. Mm -hmm. He owns all that land. So, you know, I don't think it's a case of all hat and no cattle. I think he deserves to wear that cowboy hat. What, what do you think about Andy Jassy taking over? And do you think there will be you know, dramatic changes as a result of new leadership? Do you think Bezos will still remain heavily involved as chairman? I think he'll remain heavily involved. It, in a way, I think it's a good thing for Amazon. I mean, Jeff's been running the company for over a quarter of a century, and Amazon is facing a lot of challenges that Jeff probably doesn't want to have to deal with. They're under antitrust scrutiny in Congress. Uh, their unionization moves in their warehouses. Uh, the European Union is uh, yep. looking to you know, get them on taxation, et cetera, et cetera. So, Bezos is great at innovation. He is one of the world's top innovators. I mean, since you know, Steve Jobs, uh, I think, you know, died, Bezos has become America's greatest innovator. If you look at the long lines of things he's invented from, you know, the Kindle to Alexa uh, to, you know, Fire TV to Amazon Prime, which now has, I think, 200 million members. Uh, worldwide. So as chairman, executive chairman, he's going to be able to focus on innovation. So I think Amazon will continue to be an innovative company. Now Jassy, I don't think will make dramatic changes because he was uh, one of Bezos' first shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon has this shadow program where Bezos would pick uh, a promising young executive and have that person trail him literally for two years and go to every so he meeting. So experience. Yes, he was the All first right. one. We'll yeah. have to leave it there. Brian Domain, thank you so much for joining us, talking about Bezos and space and innovation. It was a pleasure having you here today. Thank you so much oh, for the time. My pleasure, John. Thank